right, hey there. So I decided that today's project is gonna be an easy one. Let's see if it's true. I have this pile behind me here of boxes, random, mostly liquor store boxes because they're sturdy and divided. Uh, and I have a semi-empty cabinet behind me. So this cabinet behind me, you might remember if you've been watching for a while, was the cabinet I bought for my rental house kitchen because that kitchen had no pantry storage, no storage whatsoever. And I got it, I put it together, I put it up. Um, <clears throat> and I debated selling it to my landlord to leave there because it was perfect for that kitchen. But I thought, you know, I do that. I get rid of things when I move, and then after I move, I wish I had them. And I'm glad I kept this, because even though this kitchen has tons of storage, has a nice pantry, uh, I like the way it looks in here, and I wasn't going to fill it until I got the kitchen painted. But I keep changing my mind about what how I want to paint the kitchen, and so I'm living with the goldenrod for a while. I kind of want to see this kitchen through the seasons and see how the light plays in here. It's summer now, so, and this is, these are south walls, that, that's an east wall. So no matter what time of year, this kitchen's going to get good daylight, especially in the morning. Um, but I want to, I just kind of want to see it. it I want to live in it for a minute before, and I have so many other rooms to paint and wallpaper to strip and things to do that this is going to be a big job to paint this this room because of the high ceilings and the over the cabinets and covering this gold and a lot of things. So I decided I'm going to go ahead and start packing this cabinet. So just received an order of these little guys that I've had some of these in the past and I use them quite a bit. Um, but I have a lot of, well, you'll see as I unpack. This is going to be my herbs and apothecary cabinet. I used to keep my herbs and apothecary stuff. Well, I kind of had it mixed. I had some herbs that I use more in the kitchen, um, like my um, uh, herbal infusion herbs, like my nettles and oat straw, and I can't remember what all else. Clover, linden, horsetail, things like that in big jars. And I would keep them in here in the kitchen because that, that's, I would make teas and things out of them. But my more, my tinctures and my oils and things like that, I, my more medicinal herbs and apothecary things, I kept in my great grandma's china hutch. And I've now moved the china hutch into the front parlor, and I also have my grandmother's china, uh, which I've had, but I haven't, I haven't really used it much. And I'd like to put my china in that hutch. Um, so it's my great grandma Wood's china hut or hutch, and my grandma Wood, her daughter-in-law's china. Well, I guess her son's. White's China. Okay, there's a bummer about these. Oh wait, maybe they do hide them that way. I was hoping they would stack. They kind of stack. Kind of, they kind of, sort of stack. I guess they stack that way. Yeah, so I could do two layers of things. That's kind of my intention. Possibly. We'll see. We'll see. So we're going to unpack these. I'm gonna make sure you just make a stack of these after I take the plastic off. Why does everything have to come with so much plastic packaging? But it is what it is. Um, then I'm gonna start unpacking stuff. And I'll show you what I get as I go along. How's that sound? All right. Not that exciting, but you get to see some of, I can maybe talk a little bit about some of the herbs. I am not an herbalist, uh, professional herbalist. I've learned a lot over the last few years from the wonderful herbalist community in the southeast here, especially in the Chattanooga area, um, and North Georgia, and the Appalachians and things. And I hope to continue to learn more as time goes on. So anything I tell you 
It's not medical advice. It is not even professional herbalist advice. It's just how I use things and how I make things. And like many, many beginner herbalists, um, well, for a while there I got really carried away with what we call tincturitis, where every herb I found, every plant, wild plant that I found, I tinctured it. I put it in vodka and I let it sit and I shook it up and I did all the things. And uh, now I have tons of tinctures for things that I made too much and I don't want to sell. It's not my intention. So I have them. I hope that eventually, I mean, they're not going to go bad. They're tinctures. So, and every day I learn a little bit more about what I can do with them. Now I have to figure out what I can do with all this plastic so it doesn't just go in the garbage. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Let's get unpacking. Sometimes you got to make a big mess in order to organize a big mess. So, yeah, all those empty boxes and wrapping paper and jars that still need homes and etc. But it's getting there. Um, okay, so a few lessons that I've learned as I've gone through this process. Just because it's an herb you use all the time and you think you're really, really, really familiar with it, still label your jars because I have this jar that says on the lid, elderflower. That is decidedly not elderflower. I am 99.9% .9 sure it is lemon balm. And I just found the closest jar when I harvested and dried it and shoved it in there and didn't look at the label. So, um, yeah, I'm pretty, it's either lemon balm or plantain and oh you know what it's plantain now that i look at the leaves so this is plantain and i have some other dried plantain in here so i guess i'll put them together also um before i moved into the little house the rental house my house was that i shared with my ex uh it wasn't an ex yet at that point you know what i'm talking about I had a workspace in the lower level. It was a three level house. And so it was like a walkout basement garage on the lower level. And that's where my workspace was. So I had a lot of smaller jars or other jars of like the calendula flowers and a few other things that I had in two spaces. I'd have them upstairs where I could get them when I was in the kitchen, but I also had them downstairs in my workspace um, if I wanted to use them for ceremonial things, um, or whatever, making soaps or oils or things out of them. So now I found that I had du duplicates. Um, so I got to marry a few, uh, things and there's also a few without labels. I know for a fact, this is nettles. I had two jars of nettles. Now I have one jar of nettles. Um, would you like to take a little tour of my stuff there's still stuff that needs labeling and put away but let me show you what and i don't there must be another bottle jar the box oh this one down here what do we have in here Oop, we're empty that's useful See, yeah, that's what this, this one down here is like empty bottles, and I swore I had more tinctures than this. I should have more tinctures in dropper bottles somewhere. They'll show up, because that's what I got these for. I was going to put the, well, let me show you. Let me take you on a little tour, okay? So, bottom shelf are my half gallon or larger jars of dried herbs that I mostly use for herbal infusions, that kind of thing. There are a few other things in here. So this one that's not labeled, this is chickweed that I just put in there. 
I love chickweed. It's one of my favorites. And I quite often buy it by the bag instead of buying, harvesting it, depending on the time of year and where I can find it. Behind that, in the back, the big yellow jar of yellow, that is calendula flowers. I way overbought calendula flowers uh, when I was making calendula oils and salves and soaps and things. Uh, I have enough now. Oops, I just kicked a jar over. This is oat straw, needs a label. Again, a great herbal infusion. Red clover that I've har I wild harvested. And uh, other herbalists claim that, you know, this, if you make an infusion and get it cold, maybe put a little honey in it, it tastes like iced tea. It does not to me, but I think that my body just doesn't need what red clover has to offer. That's where I'm leaving that at. Back behind there is a few wild harvested linden blossoms uh, from last summer. I like that. Actually, I think it might be time to crack that out and, and bring some of that out. That's a good one for this time of year for me. Uh, horsetail. I had a whole bunch of horsetail. Because that's the thing, when you buy a pound of a dried herb, you don't realize that you're getting like a five-gallon bucket. And I've shared some of this with friends. First time I tried making an infusion with horsetail, I didn't like it. And then I went back to it and must have been what my body needed at the time. Horsetail has a lot of silica, things like that in it. So it's really good for like bones and hair and cartilage and I don't know, all that kind of stuff. Again, this is not medical advice by any stretch of imagination. So this is not chickweed, even though it says chickweed. This is some of my dried mugwort from my spring harvest. Behind there, and you might have seen me on the on the video trying to, I have a, <laughs> a bag of reishi, dried reishi mushrooms, but those mushrooms in that very back here, these are a small bunch of, they could go in a smaller jar, uh, so I was trying to put the reishi in with them, but I didn't want to open them, mix them up. Those are turkey tail mushrooms that I found wild harvesting back in Tennessee. And I love to add turkey tail mushrooms to my elderberry syrup uh, in the cold, cold and flu season because it has so many good benefits, but you can use it for a lot of other things. Again, I think I already said nettles is like my number one go-to herbal infusion, which is one of the reasons that I'm unpacking this today is because I needed to get at all of these guys and start doing my herbal infusions on a regular again because my energy's slack, lagging. <clears throat> I'm in, you know, really pushing it and uh, I can feel my body needing some extra support. This is a big, beautiful jar of lavender blossoms. And obviously I don't really use this color. I could, they're culinary grade. I could use them for culinary stuff. Maybe occasionally I'll make, make like a lemon loaf or something with some, I don't know. And then there's chamomile flowers back there. So these are more, these and the calendula on the other end are more my um, kind of bath and body works kind of uh, herbs. So I'm, I need to reorganize these. I just threw them in here as I open. Rama holy basil is one of my favorite herbal teas. I will make a pot of this in the morning. Since my kidney stone, I've been told not to drink as much black tea. Actually, I probably shouldn't drink any black tea but I do like a hot cup of Earl Grey every now and then. So lemon balm, holy basil, and a few other things are like my go-to morning. But now that I got these out, I think I'm gonna start making my herbal infusions before bed and start drinking those in the morning. And I think, oh, this, <laughs> this is, doesn't need you, well, I don't know, it will be in here for now. This is a big jar of white sage. And if you've seen my other videos about smudging, saning, using different herbs to burn, um, this is kind of very sacred. I mean, it's, we know it's a sacred herb, but I got this one pound bag of white sage loose leaf from a indigenous supplier probably three years ago. And I use it so sparingly that I keep it in this dark amber jar in the back of my cabinet so that it is always there if I need it, but it, that's a lifetime of sage for me because I really don't burn that much sage. All right, so that's the big dried herb jars. And then, like I said, I know I have more tinctures. I think they're in this other, they're either in a box that I haven't come to yet 
that got sorted into a different room or they're in this one that's at my feet. Because I know the other box that's down here is my cookbooks that I thought maybe would go on this top shelf and they may still. I may rearrange this a little more because um, this is not very useful. Well, this cleaver's tincture will go down here. So this is a cleaver's tincture that I'm going to put over here. Okay, this is a mugwort tincture in process. Of course, I have three eight ounce bottles of mugwort tincture here. Plus, I know I have some dropper bottles. That's the what's missing is all my dropper bottles of tincture. They're somewhere. So these aren't going to go on this shelf ultimately, but they're just up there for now because I had to get them out of the way. This is a cedar oil that should be strained. It's been in here for a long time to make like a cedar. I think I might use it for soap making for winter. I think I'll get some... Uh, balsam or cedar scent or something cedar and sandalwood scent for soaps and make some soap out of that here so these are my smaller things of dried herbs and so i have two things of mullein leaf and i do have an empty half gallon jar so they might go together in there um so that they're that can go down here i don't know again this hasn't been organized yet it's just been put in here because I need to get something to lift the back row up to here so that I can, oops, up to here so that I can see each row uh, better. And I have right now, I have a two by four back there, but that does only lift it up two inches, not enough. And even those pantry stair step organizers, they're more for canned goods, like cans, like soup cans. So I'm gonna have to uh, get creative and build something to lift those up if I keep them on that shelf. So what do I have up here? Well, I have comfrey root and I have dried skull cap. I have yarrow powder and which uh, now that I have a beautiful yarrow plant, I don't know. Okay, these back three are rose petals that I've dried off of different rose bushes that I've had. So they're untreated roses. And again, I like to use those for things like um, bath teas. And sometimes I will put them in a tea as well. Back corner is some uh, loose tobacco. I believe it's just pipe tobacco. That is left over from a teacher training, a training that I did. And we used different herbs for the four directions. And I still have it. I don't smoke a pipe. I don't really use tobacco in my personal um, rituals that often, but I have it. So if I ever need it, uh, and then plant dried plantain, which where's that other jar of plantain? Maybe I can make them fit. I don't know. Elderberries, dried elderberries, passion flower. This is from a friend of mine up north. She grew a passion flower. Um, vine and dried it it's from 218 so i don't know how you know much vitality is left in those but it was from a, a gift from a friend so i'm going to keep it comfrey leaf so i have comfrey root and comfrey leaf mugwort which this is the last time i will ever purchase mugwort because i have such a huge mugwort plant cinnamon sticks they don't really need to be in a quart jar but that's where they are again uh let's go ahead. the two i'm going to pull these out because I'm going to marry those together in that big jar. Bay leaves. Every kitchen and every witch needs to have a big jar of bay leaves. Uh, so many things. And then a jar of activated charcoal. Again, I don't know why that... Well, it's good to have it in here because you can use it for if you get poisoned or stuff. I also use it in um, soaps and things like that. So... It's a little tour of my medicinal and herbal goodies. I kind of like having all this in one place because like I said, I had some of the dried herbs in here in my kitchen and then I had all the oils and other more magical herbs or tinctures and things in the other cabinet. So I like this. This is working for me. The lower cabinet doesn't have anything in it, I don't think right now, but I'm either going to put uh, like empty jars so they're right handy when I get something and need them because there are things over here that I have discovered as I unpacked that are not in jars. They need to be in jars. Like I have some dried arnica, 
I have some hawthorn berries. They can go in pint jars if I can find some pint. I have pint jars. I just got to dig them out. Oh, there's some more goldenrod tincture. So that can go in there. And rose tincture. I wish I'd made rose water when I had roses, but I'll have roses again. It'll happen. So I have all these little pint, uh, pint jars here that could sit in front of the quart jars if I had the quart jars elevated. So we'll figure it out. Or I'll put them in some of these little bins and slide them in here and make it all work. This is just the unloading and sorting phase of it, but even just that little bit makes me happy. Getting one thing checked off. So let me show you what's in these boxes down here. I discovered my retirement fund, I think. Well, a couple of years ago, it definitely would have uh, come in handy. The first one is not that. Hold on. So this box in here, well, it's my Vitamix cookbook. That is not what I wanted. But these little jars are the elderflower cordial that I made last spring, plus some empties, which I can put some of that stuff I just found. All right, now let me show you what else is in this box, or in the box below it. So in the stuff that came out of my storage unit, I was excited to see this quart box of quart jars, so I thought. But I opened it up, and <laughs> it is every box of wide mouth bands and lids, and some regular ones, and then a whole bunch of just bands. I don't remember where these all came from and why I have so many, but I think it's a sign from the universe that I need to get canning. I need to get myself to the store, that I need to get myself to the farmer's market or the fruit stand and get myself some produce and canned. Then I'll need to buy another cabinet to put them in. Now, I can start using the upper cabinets that I haven't used in the kitchen to put out of season, not out of season, but back stock of things. That's that's where I have to go with things. And i am got, oh, that's a whole other video, but um, I'm making a little headway in my back room here, and I have some shelves that need to be put up. So if I get more stuff canned, I can also back stock in there. But progress, like I've said every day, just do a little something and eventually it will all get done. And I'm not going anywhere anytime soon and I'm not on any deadlines, so I'm just getting it done. So I hope you enjoyed my Saturday mess making. It's gonna take me another half the afternoon probably to clean up all this. Yeah. So I got up this morning and I finished getting stuff in here. I'm not 100% sure it's final, but it's pretty dang good. Oh, and of course, here's a kitten. So I got some labels, that the ones I could find, <laughs> not the ones I wanted to use, but the ones I could find on the jars that didn't have labels. And the top is full, the bottom is full-ish, bottom bottom is empty jars, which is just so handy to have a place A to put an empty jar when I empty one, and B to find an empty jar when I need one. So I also think I have some empty like kombucha bottles and stuff elsewhere, so the empties might not stay there because there's a corner cabinet over here in the kitchen that might get the rest of them. And then, let's see, do I wanna show you what's in here? Yeah. Then there's like the empty dropper bottles. These are the empty um, muslin bags, my scale, and I have ants. I just put some down, some taro. So hopefully these ants will get out of here soon. But my my hand mixer and my pulser zip, 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 zip thing, it has a name, whatever you call it. Um, it's great for making soap and mayonnaise, not necessarily at the same time. I still have this plastic bin with large jars. Like I said, I still have my kombucha stuff somewhere. Well, I know where it is. It's right around the corner, but uh, the jars are too big to go without taking out a shelf and I kind of need the shelves in there. Blah, blah, blah. Leaving it, it'll find a home eventually. So that's the end. It's the end of that little project 
for now. Nothing is ever done done, I don't think, around here. But uh, it is what it is. I have all my herbs where I can get to them, and that makes me very happy. And I've cleaned off the table behind me. You can't see it. I'm not going to show you. And the island is getting better. So I'm going to go make myself a smoothie or something delicious for breakfast and then go take a shower and enjoy my Sunday. It's a little cooler. We had some hellacious storms last night and it cooled it off a little bit. Probably won't last. This is Alabama after all and it's July. So I will see y'all on the flip side.